I get to the place and there's a random homeless person <laughs> that Lola is a 12-year-old female spade at Pekingese. She came in late last night on emergency for an acute right pelvic limb lameness. And Lola has a history of having slit discs. She had surgery in 2019 and 2020 in April of both of those years for slit discs at C45 and C34. Um, but last night she felt pretty comfortable in her neck, but she has a right uh, lameness in her right back leg. Um, so we will scan her today and make sure that her back looks good and her hips look good. The question whenever there's lameness is, is it a, an orthopedic, meaning bone and joint uh, cause of lameness, like knees or hips or ankles, or is it a neurological cause, meaning a slip disc that's affecting one of the nerves that goes to a, to a limb? I mean, um, I, I agree she's has kind of a, a low tail carriage. She just kind of sit and plop. going kiddo come back over here the things that I look for to try and determine whether it's more ortho or neuro um, obviously are there any orthopedic abnormalities you know swollen joints painful joints uh, anything that hurts um, versus is it more of a, a back problem so the things that I look for there are things like tail carriage um, are we painful in the back things like reflexes what are patellar reflex what are withdrawal reflexes like so in between the tail carriage, between her history, between not finding anything else orthopedically wrong, um, and the uh, kyphotic posture. I think it's a good plan to image her today. I cool. guess the question is, is when? Um, so I don't know if they're going to cut her okay. again. Um, so I think this morning is a good plan because at least then it'll give her them some time to, if we find a disc, to think about sure. if they want to cut her or not. But he gave me the impression this morning that He's not actually interested in surgery again, but wants to make sure it's not like a tumor or something. Sure, no, I think that's a good point. Yeah. So, I think this is the first time that you guys have been filming us since coronavirus. Is that a yes over there? Yeah, please. Okay. <laughs> We're actually in July right now, so we've been doing all of these coronavirus type protocols for quite some time where um, it's a little different. Normally patients would come inside, clients would come inside, we'd meet with them, or we're doing it a little bit differently now where uh, clients are staying outside in the car, they're calling in, we're bringing their pet in, doing the examination, and then uh, calling them. So not quite as much client interaction. That's probably one of the things that I miss the most, um, but we're still able to do a really good job and um, you know sometimes we'll FaceTime most of the time we're just on the phone. Yes. This is Tekenya. Ooh. He's cute. He is cute. He's an eight-week-old male intact Maltese Shizu mix. He came to us today for difficulty walking about a week ago. He just got really lethargic and started hiding from his owners, um, and they saw him limping and really unwilling to walk. Um, so he was sent over today for evaluation. On his exam, he's got a little bit of a puffy face, a little bit of irritation around his muzzle. His lymph nodes are quite large. Yeah, um, yeah and his joints are all quite painful and um, effusive as well. So I'm worried that he has an infectious or autoimmune disease. Your tail works fine now. <laughs> yeah, it works good. <laughs> All right, buddy. So that was his left carpal tunnel. Oh, those are his elbows, or his right elbow, where he's objecting like that. So he doesn't have a menace response. A menace response. What we're, what we do is we bring our hand in a menacing gesture to his eye. Um, and the appropriate response is for him to blink his eye, to protect the eye. And, uh, it involves a, a, a lot of things, but just the information making it back from the eye to the brain, 
uh, the brain sort of interpreting that and then bringing it back out through the facial nerve to blink the eye. But um, patients under 12 weeks of age usually don't have a menace, so it doesn't, doesn't develop until after. So um, the fact that he doesn't have a menace doesn't bother me at all. It's consistent with his age. Yeah, his, his muzzle's really mm -hmm. just thick, thick and, and kind of crusty. Yeah. And his lymph node, so lymph node in a dog this size should be in a kind of, I don't know, a couple peas. I mean, these are big cherries. Yeah, grapes, a big cherries. cherry, grape. But yeah. I'm quite lobulated. Okay. Sorry, buddy. So plan? Plan. I guess we can offer to joint tap. Um, so I think they're all a little bit swollen. If they don't want to, plus or minus infectious disease testing, I guess probably a tick one panel would be best. Um, if they don't want to do those, uh, we can drop the from the bed. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. this is a little bit out of, it's not a neurological problem per se. Um, so dogs can present to us with orthopedic problems or systemic problems just uh, where because they're not walking it can mimic neurological disease so we end up seeing it. So our suspicion isn't that this is a brain or spinal cord or nerve or muscle problem um, but we see it because the dog's not walking properly. So um, we can also talk with Dr. Uh, Kelly about him, what if you would want to manage this. Yeah, last night we tried a new pizza place in town and my family wanted a meat lover's pizza and I don't eat meat so I like, like oh this is a great idea this way if we because Marianne wanted to order it half you know something that I would eat and half meat lovers and I'm like no just order the whole thing meat lovers <laughs> <laughs> I'm tightening up in case <laughs> like we get there we wait it's like a you know $30 pizza which you know I'm happy to support the local mm -hmm. community not and we get home and it's a cheese pizza yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know so I call them and they were very nice and you know like oh we'll refund you the eight dollars you know difference and I'm like I think my family actually wanted like you know actual meat, mm -hmm. actual meat and stuff like that you know so we go back and they, they've, they're like yep it's sitting right here sorry we just gave you the wrong pizza you know, and not that I would ever take a pizza back anyway, because I wouldn't, didn't, wouldn't think they'd accept it, but especially with coronavirus, I'm like, dude, no one's going to want this. And it was really weird. I thought to myself, I'm going to go and just give it to a homeless person. Mm -hmm. like, but then I think to myself, there's not a random homeless person that's going to be looking for a pizza. I get to the place and there's a random homeless person <laughs> no. that, that, that says, you know, says, says hey, you know, and, and like, I never carry cash, you know, and um, so I'm thinking to myself, well, heck, I didn't bring the pizza. <laughs> um, anyway, so I ordered him a pizza inside, you know, and I'm like, hey, there's a guy outside, you know, can I buy him a pizza, you know, um, and, and then when I got home, I'm like, I wonder if it's, like that, it wasn't like this is how paranoid my brain is. Is that it wasn't an actual person asking, and it was the company, so that they could recoup their twelve dollars. Oh <laughs> is that they plan? I know it's, it's crazy to even think that, but for that puppy, Gilly wanted to take it back. Okay, so I sent it back to Gilly. He awesome. was super thankful. The owners were very happy that they didn't have to do any any awesome. neurologic type stuff. I really like him. Gilly or the dog? Uh, both of them. Okay. But Good. I had a a, a, a longer deeper relationship <laughs> with Dr. Gilly over 10 years, okay. but I really like the dog because he's a puppy. And... Perfect. Um, Darla is a seven-year-old female speed dachshund. On July 1st, so three weeks ago, she shook her head, yelped, laid down, stopped eating and was dragging her back legs. She was staying with the owner's parents at the time who gave some leftover meds they had from their dog. Um, it was a muscle relaxer, they say, but we, we don't actually know. And then a week later, she improved. Now she's able to walk. She's a little bit wobbly in her back legs, but she's comfy, eating and drinking well. Um, and that's it. She's not on any meds. She looks pretty good. She's am strong and ambulatory, slightly paraparotic, and toxic in the back legs. Um, she may be tenses on cranial lumbar palpation, but she's not like super painful. She's got all of her reflexes. She has delayed proprioception in the left pelvic limb, intact in the right pelvic limb. Thoracic limbs are normal. She's not painful in her neck. T three L three, hopefully improving. But rest medications. Yep. Okay, let's take a look. Boy. Hello. Hi, Darla. 
Oh, what a nice doll. Also very cute. Hey, boy. I love you. Bye. Oh, yeah, I already sprayed a lot. What are you doing, huh? Oh. Being a puppy. Thank you. Turn you around. One, two, and oh, my goodness. You're okay, Darla. Yes, I, I agree. We are ambulatory paraparetic, right worse than left, so you can see we're we're weak and wobbly in our rear limbs. We kind of scuff and buckle in them, um, but we're able to walk without assistance. It sounds like this is better than where it was when it started. Uh, it sounds like when it started, we were dragging the back legs. So we're improving. She doesn't seem painful. The most likely thing is a slipped disc. There are other things it can be, but when we have a dog that we suspect a slipped disc um, and they're able to they're unable to walk, but they're able to move their legs. There's like a 65% chance that they can get better on their own. Um, so fast forward to a week later where we're at now, where we've improved, you know, the recommendation typically will be continue with doing what you're doing in that um, it seems to be working and there's a 65, 70% chance that it's going to work. Um, by doing what you're doing, we mean strict cage rest. We'll probably put her on some pain medications, um, some anti-inflammatories, etc. Um, and uh, not that she's super painful, but if we can help her chill out a little bit and she'll accept the crate a little bit better. And then uh, leash walks only outside. If things aren't getting better or if things are getting worse, we start dragging the leg again or we start uh, being painful and um, we're going to want to see them back lickety split. So that's what our recommendation is going to be. Occasionally the pet owner will say, nope, I just want to do an MRI. At that point, we'll kind of talk to them again about pros and cons, it's not wrong to do an MRI, but um, being that we're this improved. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Even if she initially gets better, but then you see her dragging her legs again, or she gets painful again, then we say, okay, we've got to kind of change approaches here. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, so like I said, strict rest in a crate or small playpen for about four weeks time. Um, I want her to go outside a few times a day for potty, you know, purposes on a leash and chest harness. So I don't want her to have any um, kind of unsupervised, uncontrolled activity. Um, after those four weeks, she can be um, kind of in one room of the house. Um, so meaning that she's still not doing anything like jumping or running or off leash activity, but she gets, we kind of build more and more room and more and more space for her over time. Mm, I'm gonna drop it. Ow. Oh, excuse me, you gotta shut me out of your way. Cool. Okay. Who's that back there? Get her. <laughs> yeah, he's certainly stiff and stilted and toxic in his public lips. Well, okay. Okay, Machi. <laughs> Hasta la vista. Hello. Hi there, it's Dr. Wong. How are you? Hi, Dr. Wong. I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm okay. So, thanks for your patience. We've having a, a busy day here. Um, I know. So he's 12 years old. He, he started getting painful in his back. Um, and when Dr. Webb saw him on the 15th, he was able to walk, but he was wobbly. He had an arched back. Um, right. his, his, he didn't replace his rear limbs if they were uh, placed upside down, and he seemed painful in his back. At, at that point, we said, well, it could be a slip disc, but there are other things like cancer and inflammation that are, are possible um, and he talked about doing an MRI but planned on doing rest and medications um, assuming it was a slip disc um, but he's Machi's not doing well and um, do you see him getting more wobbly more painful or or both well I didn't really put him down you know like I tried to take him out this morning and when you know he first got up because he wasn't on the medicine like 
you know, he kind of like fell over. And then my husband tried taking him out later, a little bit later, and he stood and he would take like a couple of steps, but very, very slowly. Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm looking at the notes from 2019. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at, at, at him right now. And it certainly looks like he has a, a back problem. He's able to walk, but he's arched in his back. Right. He's wobbly in his rear limbs. You know, he kind of, right. when he, he's reluctant to walk, he'll kind of just stand in one spot. But when he turns, he kind of falls over in his rear end. Right. Um, I, I'm not getting the sense that he's excruciatingly painful today. Um, I know when Dr. Webb saw him earlier today, he was, uh, you know, um, seemed more painful than, than on the 15th. So there, there are a couple different ways we can approach this. Approach number one is that we do an MRI to find out what's going on in his back. Is it a slip disc or is it something more worrisome like a tumor or inflammation or meningitis or something like that? Um, and we hope that it's a slip disc because if it is, our chances of fixing it are very, very good in the 90, 95% range. Option number two is that we don't proceed with that and we keep doing what we're doing. Um, you know, the medications, maybe we increase the prednisone again. So I, I just want to do what's best for him. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think, it, you know, since he's getting worse, um, you know, since it's not getting better, and since we don't know what the cause is, I think it makes sense to do tests to find out what we're dealing with and to help make those decisions based off of the findings. Right. All right. I'm in agreement with that. I know it's like, you know, the movie came out like three years ago, but I watched Rogue One again this weekend. And like, you, I'm sure you know all of these things, but like, they actually have the ghost oh, I have to go in, in, in one of like, where everyone comes out of hyperspace and they're getting ready for like the big battle at the oh, end. Oh yeah, I heard about that. The, the ghost is in there and like what caused me to, I didn't notice it, but what caused me to find that was like when they're walking through, they page overhead, you know, General Sindula, General Sindula, and I'm like... <laughs> I probably have to go back and watch. I watched Rule 1. It's, it's neat. How everything connects now. Yeah. So this is Machi's MRI of his back. So this is his bladder, uh, these are the bones of his back. In between each bone is a disc, this is the spinal cord. And the changes here are pretty subtle. Um, so we don't see something obvious pressing on the spinal cord, but when we look at the subtleties, so the fluid on the outside of the spinal cord and the fluid that runs right down the middle of the spinal cord, you can see how they kind of get attenuated right about there, right about here, right about there. So it just draws our eye to a problem here. Um, one of the next things we do is a cross section. Um, so, a, whoops, a slice of bread. And when we go right here, um, sometimes MRIs are really, really obvious and the slip disc shows really well, but sometimes the disc, which is this right here, can look very similar to the spinal cord. So sometimes it's, it's a very different color. It's very, very bright or very, very uh, dark different than the spinal cord, but in this particular case here, at least the slices that we've got, um, it's the same intensity or same amount of brightness as the spinal cord. So we look at it in a third plane. So this plane is, is like that, whereas this plane is gonna be a slice like this, is that it's, it's pretty obvious that we've got something sitting right here on the right side between the second lumbar vertebra and the third. There actually is something on the left side at L34, um, but it just looks a little bit more chronic to me. So we're going to address uh, potentially both of them, unless this one looks super nice and fresh, but there's the potential that we're going in after both of these on opposite sides, which will add a little bit of time to the, uh, the surgery. But prognosis is still excellent, 95% chance that we're going to fix this. Thank you.